What's going on guys? Welcome back to Sector for Nerds. I'm Ryan Brower and today I'm here to give you guys my thoughts on Star Wars The Bad Batch Episode 2 Cut and Run. But before we do that you guys make sure you guys give this channel a subscribe if you haven't already. If this is your first time viewing me uh, I like to do a lot of reaction videos on my channel especially to uh, fan made Star Wars content whether that be tribute videos or fan films. I also like to do a lot of discussions on the latest uh, Disney Plus episodes when it comes to shows in Star Wars or Marvel so whether it be you know the Mandalorian Star Wars the Clone Wars season 7 I'm obviously doing it with Bad Batch right now and then with Marvel I've done WandaVision the Falcon Winter Soldier we got Loki coming up as well which thank goodness it's going to be on Wednesdays and not Fridays because that's it's going to make things so much more convenient for me so that way I don't have to worry about making two videos on a Friday and then you know worry about you know possible oh, I may have to post one on Friday and one on Saturday or something like that you know what I'm saying because I've also learned with the YouTube algorithm as well like if you post Post, you know, multiple videos a day, one of them is, at least one of them is going to be bound to be lost in the shuffle. So I like that Loki is now on Wednesday. So that's, consider that like your update now, you guys. We're going to be doing Loki reviews on Wednesdays while doing Bad Batch reviews on Fridays. Or I don't even call them reviews. I like to call them discussions because I like to, I like to be able to discuss these episodes with you guys and give you guys my uh, honest and personal thoughts towards these episodes. I don't necessarily like to think of it as a as a review. So yeah, that's going to make things so much more convenient for me. Uh, but now you guys, let's talk about this episode. So there were, you know, two big things coming out of this episode. One being Cut Laquane being there and his wife Sue and the kids, uh, which was pretty cool to see. We obviously, you know, like I said last week or on Tuesday with my J19 video, I predicted it. I'm like, it's the Luke am I. We're going to be going to see Cut and that's exactly what happened. And the other big news to come out of this episode is that Cut has been in contact with Rex. Apparently, Rex was on Seleucami, but now he's gone in something about dealing with the inhibitor chips. I'm wondering what Rex is up to right now. Like, is he trying to find a way to remove the inhibitor chips from clones or something like that? I don't know. Because he wants to obviously learn more about these chips. And he, granted, he no longer has one in his head. So, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, obviously we know Rex is going to be in the show based on the trailer. But what his game is going to be is, uh, is going to be interesting. Now, they didn't mention Ahsoka at all, so my guess is now that Rex and Ahsoka have officially split up, which, you know, it, I was kind of hoping we would see, like, them, like, leaving, and then that, w you know, makes the Rebels moment that much sweeter, but it's okay. I think there's still every chance that we could see Ahsoka. She's just not gonna be with Rex. Unless Rex ends up traveling with the Bad Batch for a little bit, that'd be great. Um, I liked that Echo was, like, all excited to hear about Rex, you know what I'm saying? Like, when he's like, wait, Rex was here? Like, where is he now? So, like, I, can't, like I said, I can't wait for Echo and Rex to reunite, because, you know, knowing that one Domino member still stands. One Domino still stands is, uh, it's gonna be pretty cool to, for Rex to see and for Rex and Echo to be back together again for an episode, like, that'll be great. This show, you guys, so far, like, just based on the episodes that we've seen and what we're probably gonna be seeing going forward, this show ha very much has Mandalorian vibes to me where it's like, you know, the Mandalorian, he would just go around the galaxy, scouring the galaxy, you know, just going on these different missions and everything like that, um, and, like, each episode has its own like little contained story or mission that they would go on and then obviously you had like the overarching thing of uh of Mando trying to reunite Grogu with his kind um and that that's honestly what Bad Batch feels to me I think the only difference is obviously is we're in a different era and also we're traveling with a group instead of an individual now as great as it was to hear about Rex being around and as great as it was to see Cut Laquane my favorite part about this episode was Hunter and Omega. When it comes to Hunter, Hunter is quickly becoming my favorite member of the Bad Batch. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, Wrecker is still my guy, and we got plenty to talk about that Wrecker did in this episode as well that I was uh, a big fan of. Uh, but Hunter probably probably moving in close second right now as far as my favorite Bad Batch members. And then there's Omega, who, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, has grown on me a lot. Like, this, uh, I was very curious about her in the trailer, and then, you know, even more so curious 
curious and intrigued about her in the first episode. And, you know, I think especially after this episode, you guys, like, she's she's really she's really grown on me. I, I really do like her. When they arrived on Seleucami, which, by the way, Seleucami looks amazing, you guys. If you guys go back and look at Seleucami from Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 2 and look at it now, it looks so much better now than it did back then. But that's just because of how good the animation is with the Bad Batch. And obviously, I think it's the same as Clone Wars Season 7, if not a little bit better. But it's like, guys, honestly, when it comes to the Bad Batch animation, this is just the best that like it's ever looked. And it's I, it's so awesome. Like if, the, if there was one positive for Disney to take over the animation stuff is that uh, you, like, I mean, I know Dave's still running it, but if there was any... Uh, good to come out of it would be that Disney has given them so much money to make the animation style just look so amazing. So you know what? In that regard, I gotta I gotta thank Disney for that. But anyway, back to my point about Omega. Uh, Omega, watching her step on Seleucami for the first time, it was just so cool to see because she had never been anywhere else. All she had been on is Kamino. So you know, she she comes there and like her eyes are just like super wide open. You know, like you saw at the end of the episode when they. They were going into light speed uh, in the first one. Like, she was amazed by that. And then she was even more amazed when she steps foot on Seleucami. And then she's, like, grabbing dirt from the ground. And she doesn't know what it is. And then, funny enough, my mind kind of went, oh, could you imagine if she picked up sand? The amount of memes. That's probably why Dave didn't make it sand. Because he knew he's like, oh, we probably got to be careful here. Because people are going to make so many I don't like sand memes about it. Later on, we see Omega playing catch with Cut's kids. And she doesn't know what she's doing. And then when she tries to throw the ball. She throws it in the wrong direction. She uh, runs off to go and get it. And then, of course, one of those uh, creatures from Attack of the Clones. I, I swear I always pronounce this wrong, but it's like N-E-X-U, like ne Neku, Nexu, something like that. That's from Attack of the Clones. That's in the, uh, the arena. It looked exactly like it. And um, they go to protect her. And by they, I mean Bad Batch, Cut, and Sue. The minute when Cut, like, kind of just cradled Omega in his arms, I was kind of thinking, like, shoot, Hunter's gonna want Omega to go with them. And that's exactly what happened later. Um, Omega, obviously, before we get to that, though, I just want to say, Omega, like, watching her in the ship crying and feeling like, oh, I messed up. It's kind of sad to see, right? Because this child who didn't understand what that not going past the fence meant and she did it and, and she understood like okay well now this is this is what happens but she's only ever been on Camino you know what I'm saying like she she doesn't know any better and then later on in the episode when she's gonna go with uh um with Cud and and Sue I honestly you guys like if here's the thing I probably would have cried here but then I also thought I'm like oh but wait we know Omega's gonna be in future episodes darn it like it's it's kind of already spoiled. But like I was sitting there like, no, I don't want Omega to leave. I want her to stay with the Bad Batch. And obviously that she felt the same way. And I, I really liked the conversation that her and Hunter had at the end of the episode where she says like, I know I have a lot to learn, but this is where I want to be. And then Hunter's like, well, if this is where you want to be, then this is where you should be. And so now I, I like that Hunter is almost like become the father to Omega. You know what I'm saying? So like Hunter, Hunter's like really working on his, uh, his uh, dad skills in this episode because he he would always get like so worried too like wait you let Omega go off alone uh, when he's talking to, to Echo and Tech I'm very curious to learn more about Omega and I think we're going to do that as the, the series goes on. I will admit that one of my concerns about the show would have been and maybe this still could be a concern but I judging by this episode I don't think it will be. My worry was going to be that you, you center the show around Bad Batch and Omega is just kind of there you know what I'm saying like she doesn't necessarily play a crucial part into the story but like she had a huge part in this episode so I and on top of that I don't know why I would ever doubt Dave Filoni you know what I'm saying like I you know maybe it's just sometimes because in the Mandalorian like Grogu would kind of sometimes just be there and he wouldn't be a crucial part of some of the episodes which is fine uh he doesn't necessarily have to be a crucial part of every episode and neither does Omega but I want Omega to be featured and for her to be able to be as much a part of this story as the Bad Batch is because I, it does feel like this story is just as much about Omega as it is about Bad Batch. And that does excite me a lot because honestly, Omega very much does intrigue me and I'm very excited to see more of her. Okay, you guys, we need to spend a good minute or two talking about my man Wrecker. 
I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if people think, oh, he's not actually that funny. No, he is that funny and it's great. My man Wrecker took his left fist and went, oh, I don't have the chain codes in this hand. And he takes his right hand and he's like, oh, I put him in this one. And then he puts his hands together and he smashes all the clone troopers' heads up. Then later on in the episode, he's sitting there in the ship just randomly lifting this gong droid working out. Like, that is my man. <laughs> Screw weight benches. My All my man needs is a gong droid. It's great. I freaking love Wrecker. I don't care what anybody says. And then I loved it when the kids called him Uncle Wrecker at the start. And then when they're leaving and Wrecker's like, where's Omega? It's like, oh, Hunter, you didn't tell them. Yeah, and speaking of not telling anybody, when when uh, Omega was like, you ended up making four passes, or ended up making five instead of four. And I'm like, Hunter, you really didn't say nothing to her. And then, like, she was so heartbroken, too, like, when when she found out that she was going to be leaving with them. And I was heartbroken for her. And like I said, if I didn't know that she was going to be in more episodes, I probably would have cried. <laughs> Plus, I did kind of figure, even without seeing the trailer, like, even if I didn't see the trailer, I was kind of figuring in that moment, because sometimes I don't necessarily think about the trailers when I'm watching the episodes, but, like, as I'm watching, I'm like, okay, Omega's gonna find her way back to, to the Bad Batch, and I'm, I'm glad that she did, and like I said before, you guys, I'm excited to see more of her, I'm excited to see more Bad Batch, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this episode, are you guys excited about, uh, seeing more Bad Batch like I am, uh, I, I think we're supposed to be getting 16 episodes this season, is what I heard, um, I could be mistaken, though, um, so if someone knows the correct amount in the comments, let me know. Uh, wh what do you guys, what do you guys think about Omega so far? Do you guys like her? What do you guys think about Hunter being, like, the father figure? What do you guys, what do you guys think about the Bad Batch in general? Uh, any, any thoughts about the Bad Batch, you guys? Just place them in the comments below, because I will be, uh, reading all of them. But for now, you guys, that is gonna wrap us up here today. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share this video around, as it really helps support the channel. Channel, and I will see you guys next time. This is the way. This is the way.